flow for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about the method of joints. Uh, so what is the method of joints? Uh, the method of joints is a process used to solve for the forces uh, on individual members that are part of a truss structure. Uh, again, a truss structure uh, in engineering is a structure, collection of bodies, um, that is comprised entirely of two force members. Uh, so something like this uh, bridge down here would be an example of a truss structure. Uh, we've got basically lots of long thin beams. They're only connected at the ends, uh, and that therefore there's only forces acting on them. Uh, as part of this, we're going to assume that all external forces must act on the joints. Uh, if we had forces acting on the middle of any of these pieces, since they're connected at the ends, they would no longer be two force members. Uh, so that's an important consideration before you even start this method. Uh, with all of these two force members, they're either going to be in tension, uh, like we have here on the bottom, so they're being pulled apart, or they're going to be in compression. Uh, we're going to try to solve for those tension and compression forces in each of the members. Uh, so what makes this work with the method of joints? Uh, we have the following assumptions that kind of underlie this whole uh, process. Uh, first, the entire structure we're analyzing is in static equilibrium. It's kind of the point of statics. Uh, if we have um, this whole thing in equilibrium, uh, the members of the truss are connected to one, one another with pins. Uh, the pin joints are where we connect the pieces, and each of those is also going to be in static equilibrium because the whole thing is in static equilibrium. Uh, each member connected to the pin is either going to push, uh, so if it's in compression, it'd be pushing on the pin. If it's in tension, it'd be pulling on the pin uh, along that known direction. And that known direction is the line connecting the two joints. Uh, so each of those are two force members, so we know that. And we can use that in our analysis. Uh, so going through the whole process, first thing we're going to do uh, is with our truss structure, we're going to label all the joints, and we do this in the method of joints and the method of sections. Uh, so here I've labeled the joints A, B, C, and D. Uh, that way I can talk about individual joints um, simply with the letter, uh, and the individual members uh, I'm going to tend to refer to as what two joints they connect. Uh, so member AB, A to B, would be this member right here. Uh, after I do that, I'm going to treat the whole truss structure as a rigid body uh, and solve for the external reaction forces. So I'm going to treat this whole thing as just a single body, not a bunch of pieces. Um, I'm going to draw the free body diagram for the truss as a whole, so I remove all that background stuff. Uh, and I'm going to add in the reaction forces. Uh, so I'll need to find uh, here at this pin joint over here, I had a force in the X and a force in the Y. The roller joint over here, I just had a force on the Y. Uh, so this is similar to just the analysis of a single body. Um, <clears throat> write out the equilibrium equations. Uh, I've got forces in the x, forces in the y, and the moments. All of those, all the sums, need to be equal to zero. So once we solve those, I get my three unknown reaction forces before I go into the internal forces in the members. Um, so step three, I'm going to separate the truss into individual joints and individual members. Um, so here I've got you know, the pin at A, the pin at B, the pin at C, and the pin at D. Uh, and each of these members connecting all those pieces as well. Uh, here I also need to apply the reaction forces. So I had a load force in the middle at C. Uh, and these are my two reaction forces over at A and over at D. Uh, I had those supporting forces. I'm going to draw in all the forces that each member exerts on the pin joints. So we're focusing on the pin joints here, uh, and we're going to ignore the members themselves. Um, so if I eliminate those members, I'm going to replace them with forces. Uh, and I'm going to assume tension in all of these. So member AB that connected point A and point B down here, uh, I'm going to replace with a force AB and force AB. Those are two equal and opposite forces there. Uh, and those are going to replace each of those members. Uh, so now I've got four separate pins. These are basically four separate free body diagrams that I'm going to use for my analysis. So I write out the equilibrium equations for each of the joints. Um, so you're only going to have force equations in here. We're assuming these are all particles, so no moments. Um, and we're going to need to determine the angle of each force as well. Um, this is just simple geometry. I need to figure out you know, how far from horizontal is that um, force AB at the bottom there. So for the 
uh, a two-dimensional problem, a plane truss, I've got forces in the x and forces in the y, and I'm going to have eight total equations. I'm going to have force in the x and force in the y is equal to zero for each of these joints. So two equations at A, two equations at B, two equations at C, and two equations at D. That gives me a total of eight possible equations. Uh, and if I count up my unknowns, each member uh, is going to give me an unknown. Uh, and I'll, I'll count this up. I've simply got uh, five different members. So five unknowns, eight equations. I can pretty easily solve this. Uh, if I go to 3D, I would also be able to use several forces in the Z if I had something like a space truss. Um, so <clears throat> once I have all my equations, I've got these eight equations I can use. Um, time to start solving the equations. Uh, so find a place with only two unknowns, preferably to start. Uh, so if I start over here at A, um, I've got sum of forces in the Y, sum of forces in the X, uh, and then FAC and FAB are my two unknowns. I should be able to solve those two equations for those two unknowns. Once I find FAB, it's going to help me over here. So now I already know this force here. I've got two more unknowns, FBC and FBD. I can solve for those at the top uh, and kind of work my way across. Uh, or if it's more convenient, uh, sometimes we just want to write out all the equations uh, and then I'm going to convert that system of equations into a matrix and I can solve it in kind of one fell swoop. Um, if I get negative results, uh, initially I've assumed everything is tension, everything is pulling on these joints. If I get negative results, that's going to indicate uh, that the beam is actually in compression. Um, so positive results is tension, negative results is compression. Uh, and once I figure out all of my unknowns, that's what the method of joints is about. I've figured out the forces that are acting on these beams. I can use that later on to figure out how strong I need to make these beams or if these beams are going to break under loading. Uh, so with that, that's all I have for this video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.